In the 19th century, in the state of California, a man decided that he was going to sell his ranch. He had a passion, he wanted to find gold. And he had just discovered, or he just learned, that gold had just been discovered and had just been found in the southern state of California, in Southern California. So he made a decision, he said, I'm going to sell my ranch and I'm going to go looking for gold. And I'm never going to come back until I find gold. He sold his ranch for approximately $800. And then he went on his journey. He went on the adventure looking for gold. He sold his ranch to someone by the name of Connell Southers. Now, a few, lays, a few years later on, Connell Southers and his daughter in the evening were on the ranch. His daughter was playing with sand. Now, prior to that, Connell Southers had decided that because there was a stream flowing through the ranch, that he was going to build a mill. So he built a mill. One evening, the daughter was playing with the sand right next to the body of water. And as she was playing, she decided to go back into the house. So she took a handful of sand. As she walked into the house, Connell Southers had someone present with him in the house. The visitor noticed that as soon as the, the, the young daughter walked close to the fireplace, he noticed that the sand was glowing. It was very unusual that there was a gold color to the sand. As it turns out, right underneath the same ranch that was sold for about $800 was the largest gold reserve along or in the North American continent. You see, the man who had the ranch before could not recognize what he had. You see, we always think, or we often think, that the grass is always greener on the other side. We often think that we're not worthy and we have to be like someone else. But you were born and you were made for a reason. You were made special. You were made for a unique purpose and to do something very unique and great in the world and hidden in your design and hidden in your reason for your birth is your greatness a lot of times we think that we have to be like other people but you see you were really you were really born as a unique original so why would you want to be a replica of someone else you see you must come to the realization and the acceptance that the grass is not greener on the other side you must come to the realization that all you need to have a fulfilled life, to have a successful life, to be joyous, to be happy, to be healthy, is within you and is around you. The man who sold his ranch and who sold his farm was blinded by the opportunities that were around him. You see, you can have a passion for something so great that it blocks your focus, that you cannot see what's around you. Or what's in you and one of the keys to actually transforming your life or changing your life is the realization that all you need to become all you have to be is already within you I like the concepts of a seed and I want to use the concepts of this of a seed to perhaps explain this in a little bit more detail now to understand life you have to see life as a seed now life has all that it has or all that it can be within itself if you look at a seed a seed really is really a tree within a seed now for the tree to become the best that it can be the seed has to be put in the right environment it has to be put in the right location and it has to be nurtured and cared for now the potential of the seed is a tree Actually, it's much more than a tree, it's a collection of trees. In the same way, all that you have to be is within you. To unleash all that you have within you, you have to allow the angel in you to come out. So my first question to you really is, do you know that there is an angel within you? As the legend says, there's a story that says that Michelangelo was carving on some marble and a young boy came up to him and said Michelangelo what are you doing 
Michelangelo said, well, there is an angel within this marble and I'm trying to let the angel be free. I'm trying to bring the angel out. Now, what's really remarkable about that story is in the 1500s, I believe it was between the year 1501 and 1504, is Michelangelo was commissioned to produce the sculpture that we know as David. And what's remarkable about that story is true hard work, true labor, true persistence, and true the ability to dream. Michelangelo saw something in that marble that no one else had seen or no one else saw. I find really remarkable the idea and the truth that before Michelangelo was actually commissioned for that project, that the same marble was given to two well-recognized and celebrated artists. Both of them rejected the project. According to them, they said, well, there's nothing we can do with this marble. It's almost useless. The first commission was before Michelangelo was born. The second commission was pro approximately about the same time Michelangelo was born. What po the point I'm making here is this. There are opportunities all around you. You have to look out for the opportunities around you. Is that hidden in you and hidden in each and every one of us is a gift. We have an angel waiting to come out and come out into the world and make the world a much better place. But you have to have the vision, you have to have the foresight, you have to have the passion to see beyond your eyes. You see, the reason the other two artists rejected the commission was simply because they were looking at the sculpture, they were looking at the marble with their natural eyes. Now there is nothing wrong with using your natural eyes. The only issue is that your natural eyes will only allow you to see things as they are. Your sight is really a function of your eyes. To actually be successful, and that is success in any area of life. Now, I define success as actually a combination of good health, wealth, happiness, love, success, prosperity, money, joy, love. To be successful in any area of life, you must be able to see with your mind because when you see with your mind you see things as they could be you go beyond the natural eyes you see things as you would like them to be because you're seen through your vision now your vision is a function of your mind to change your life you need to have vision you need to be able to give yourself the permission to dream to dream of a life, to dream of a world that you want to experience. You need to be able to allow yourself the freedom to dream of anything with no restrictions and no, with no limitations. All successful people and all people who have found true happiness and who are living the abundant life have actually gotten to the stage where they realize that actually they had to go beyond seeing with their natural eyes. That they needed to combine the sight vision with the mind vision in the same way to allow the greatness within you to come out you need to dream because your dreams awaken the true potential within you you see you were born for a unique reason you were born with so much potential within you if you're waiting for other people to affirm and confirm what is within you you might be waiting for a long time. There is a legend story that says that in the ancient times, in Israel, Israel was gen gen generally ruled by prophets. Now, this is what the account of the story says, that Israel was ruled by prophets. But the people decided that they wanted to have kings. And so the prophets were, became responsible for anointing the kings. A prophet called Samuel was instructed that a new king had to be anointed and that the new king was in a different location 
and that he had to go and anoint the king. Upon arrival in the city, he found the father of this king-to-be. His name was Jesse. Now, Samuel approached Jesse and said, I've come to anoint one of your sons as king. Now, something remarkable happened, and I want you to listen carefully, because this story really shows the true value of not relying on other people, but also the true value of recognizing the greatness within you. Now, according to the account of the story, Jesse called his first son out. Now, his first son was in the army. He was in the Israeli army. He was big. He was strong. The prophet looked at him and said, this is not the one. Jesse called out the next son, who was big and who was strong, also in the army. And the prophet said, I'm sorry, this is still not the one. Now, Jesse called out the seven of his sons, all of them seasoned, all of them big and strong. And the prophet looked at all of them and said, I'm sorry, for none of them are the one. And the prophet said to Jesse, are you sure you don't have any other sons? Are you sure you don't have any other offsprings? And then he dawned on Jesse and he said, oh, that's true. I actually have another son. He's a young boy. You know, he's in the woods. He's playing with the, 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 the animals. He's a shepherd. And the prophet said, I'll wait. Can you go and send for the boy? Can you bring him? Now, as soon as David, who was the young boy, walked into the, the location where the prophet was, the prophet stood up and said, this is the king to be. What is the, the moral of the story? You see, Jesse couldn't see the greatness within his son, David. He took someone else to come into his home and say, he has greatness within him. In the same way, you must, you must, you must, and I repeat this again, you must make sure that you're not waiting and you're not relying on other people to affirm you, to confirm you as being great. Because greatness was built, it was put into you when you were born. Now, the other part of the story is that David was anointed as king probably at the age of between maybe 13 years and, you know, who knows, maybe 17 years. But he wasn't made officially king until he was about 30 years old, which means that he had to wait more than 10 years to become king. And during that time, he continued to look after the sheep. He was still a shepherd boy. But the point I'm making is that David was anointed as king, as a teenager, he had the potential. Now, he was only confirmed as king when he allowed the potential to come out of him. Now, how did he do this? Well, he had to fight Goliath. I'm sure you all know about the story of David and Goliath. It's a fascinating story about, you know, the underdog and a seasoned warrior. Now, I'm not gonna go into the detail of actually what happened, but all I want to say is that David was a shepherd boy until he fought Goliath. And the point of this is simply that, although you have potential, that it will take a Goliath, it will take maybe a challenge, a crisis, it will take true commitment for the greatness in you to come out. The other point is simply that David was able to defeat Goliath because whilst he was a shepherd boy, he was doing what I call preparation. That he was preparing for his future. Now, Benjamin Disraeli says that success will find a man who makes use of his time preparing for his future so that when the opportunity arises, he's ready for it. In the same way, you have to prepare for the future that you want. Now you have the potential within you, but potential is not everything. Potential simply means that you have an ability. Your ability needs to be put to work. And so what I want to encourage you about is I want to encourage you to think about 
your life. Think about what has been given to you. Think about the gifts that you have. Think about the opportunities that are around you and think about the future you want. Now, once you've done that, you might come to the conclusion that maybe your future is where you want to be. And I want to encourage you by saying, your future is not here yet. Is that your life is really a combination of three parts, your past, your present, and your future. Your future is not here yet. Your past is gone. It's never going to come back again. And all you have is today. So what you do every day would determine whether you're ready when the future arrives.